Hi, I'm Patrick from Emelin, and today we're going to take a look at information barrier policies in SharePoint and OneDrive. And with these policies, you will be able to create communication boundaries between segments of users based on the pre-selected Azure AD attribute. Now let's get started. Now in this video, I'll show you what steps you'll need to take in order to create the segments and the associate barriers, how you can configure the appliance of the segments in SharePoint via PowerShell and GUI, and how it will look from a user's perspective. Now, we start off with the prerequisites. First up are the licensing requirements. To create and apply the policies, you will need a Microsoft 365 E5 license or one of the E5 add-ons for the E3 licenses, which you will find on this page. Next up is requesting Microsoft to onboard you into the IBP program for SharePoint and OneDrive. You can do this by completing a form, which you will find on this page. Now the onboarding process will take around one week to complete and after that you will find a new option in SharePoint to apply one or more segments to your SharePoint sites. In OneDrive the requested policies will automatically be applied when you try to share a file. We will elaborate on this later. Now once we're done with the onboarding process it's time to fire up your PowerShell window to create the segments and the associated policies. For this demo I've already created the policies so we'll be going through the lines one by one and I'll explain what they do. Okay, now we start off with installing the, the Exchange Online PowerShell module. And we do this to uh, set up a modern authentication session towards the Security and Compliance Center. So we'll do this command first, the install dash module Exchange Online Management. And the second thing that I've set here is the install module for SharePoint Online. Now, this one's optional because you can either apply the segments to your SharePoint sites uh, via the GUI or the PowerShell uh, module. Um, but I've set it here to uh, be sure that if you want to do it with PowerShell, for instance, for some bulk edits, um, you will be able to use this module. The third thing that we'll need to do, of course, is import the uh, Exchange Online Management module. So we'll be able to, uh, to start that session. And I'm going to start the session here because that's one thing that I wanted to show you. Is that once you start a session, uh, you will see that the uh, session uh, which was first started in basic off will be converted to a OAuth, so modern authentication session. Now the third thing that we'll need to do is create the segments. And I will draw a scenario which I've got here um, because we've got a group of users and We've got Ben and Pete who work in the factory and they are not able, uh, they are not allowed to share their information uh, which they have with other departments. So we'll create a policy which blocks the communication between their segments, so their department, uh, to other departments. And the second thing that we have is Kara, who's part of the Works Council and she advises the board of directors and she needs her own uh, SharePoint site in order to store the documents. And those documents uh, will only leave the SharePoint site uh, once they're completed and approved by all the other uh, future members of the Works Council. So we're going to create those segments. And as you'll see here, I've specified my, my segments and I've entered a name and a user group filter. Now you can use this filter to uh, specify which Azure AD attribute you're going to use. So in this case, I'm going to use the department attribute. And I, says, I say if it equals the, uh, the department here, so for uh, Pete and Ben, it will be the, the, the factory and for Kara, the works council. And for our user Daniel, it will be the board of directors. Um, those segments will be created. And once we apply the policies, the users will be added to those segments. So um, the important thing here is that you only specify one specific attribute. So I've chosen to do the uh, department, but you can uh, use different uh, types of attributes. So uh, for instance, group membership or a job title. But the most thing, uh, important thing to remember here is that you can only use one specific attribute. So I can't use um, the member of uh, with the department attributes uh, and um, yeah, not, not use different attributes. So um, that's what we have here. So we've got those three segments and then we're going to create the policies themselves. 
Now, of course, for the, for the policies, we also specify a name. And for demo purposes, I just uh, filled in some random names uh, to, to make it uh, not difficult. But um, as you can see here, um, I've got the first policy, which is called factory blocked. And uh, it's got a segment assigned, the segment factory. And what I'm going to do here is block the other segments too. So uh, my factory segment can't communicate with those segments. So the works council and the board of directors. Now, the thing that's important here um, is that you can either use a segments blocked attribute or a segments allowed. And the thing is that segments allowed will uh, only allow you to share files and communicate to the segments that you specify. Whereas segments blocked will do the opposite and only block the communication to those specified segments. So for this uh, video, I've chosen to only block my active segments, um, but I could uh, also have done a, a segments allowed uh, parameter. And um, the, also, the other thing that I want to notice here is that I've set the policies to active. And this is one important thing because when you don't specify this parameter, the policies by default will be uh, disabled or not activated. So we will need to specify this parameter as well. So I've created those three policies to make sure that the factory segment can only communicate with uh, users which are in the same segment. So uh, as you can see here, I've specified the other two segments. And then it's, uh, it's just a matter of, um, of starting the application of the policies. And once you've done that, uh, you will see a progress uh, bar, which I'm going to show you here. As you'll see here, the status will uh, show you that it's not started yet. Um, but you can uh, can can check with the status uh, at a later time uh, when necessary. Now, once this operation completes, you'll be able to see the segments. And what I've done here is uh, filter out the uh, name and uh, the quit of the uh, segments, so you can apply them to the SharePoint site. So as you'll see here, I've got three uh, quits and um, the next thing I'll need to do, of course, is connect to SharePoint online. So I can apply those uh, those segments. And once we're connected, we'll be able to uh, set the uh, assignment of the uh, of the segment. So we've got the site here and we've entered the URL and we've uh, entered the associated segment that we want to apply. Now, once that applied, you'll uh, see that it reflects in the in the GUI and I'm going to show you how this uh, works in the GUI itself. So we've got the SharePoint site over here. So it's called Works Council. And on the Policies tab, we will we'll have the option to assign that information segment. Now, as you can see, because I've done it with PowerShell, um, the segment is applied. Uh, but we can also edit it here and uh, remove the segment from the site or add additional segments. So uh, you can have more than one segment assigned. Now, the important thing to notice here as well is that uh, the segment uh, doesn't uh, allow you to uh, also specify permissions immediately. So um, the process is not only uh, assigning the segment, but also giving your users the proper permissions. Now, uh, because this uh, site is based around a Microsoft 365 group, I will be able to uh, enter my members into the, uh, the group itself as site members and then um, they will be added there. Um, so this is uh, how it will look from, a, uh, from the PowerShell and from, from the GUI. And I'm going to show you how it will look if we try to open the site. So we've got the, uh, the browser window from Pete and this is his OneDrive site, but I'm going to show you first how it will look when you try to open the SharePoint site. So I'll just enter it here. And as you will see, uh, due to the organizational policies, so those information barrier policies, the access will be denied and we won't have access to this resource, so to the SharePoint site. Now, this differs from uh, Kara, of course, because she's part of the uh, Works Council segment and because she uh, has access 
uh, by the, the Microsoft 365 group. So she'll just be able to open this as well and, and browse through the site. Um, with OneDrive, the policies will be automatically applied as I, uh, as I noticed earlier. So uh, when we try to share a file from uh, Pete's OneDrive, which you'll do here, we will be able to share it to Ben because he's part of the same segment, uh, which is of course the same department because we've used that attribute. So I'll be, share, be able to share that file with Ben, as you'll see here. Um, but I, when I enter a different name, so for instance the name of Kara, you'll see, you'll see that uh, there will be no uh, result to show uh, for her name. And um, this also applies to Daniel, who's part of the board of directors. So those segments will immediately be applied with the associated policies and you will not be able to share it with the other users. Now, when we go to uh, Keras OneDrive, we'll also see the same. So we won't be able to share it with Ben and with Pete, but we will be able to share it with Daniel because he's part of a segment uh, which doesn't have any uh, policy applies that block those, that communication. So we'll be able to share it with Daniel. So as you'll see, um, this is the way you will be able to apply those uh, segments and policies and you can make sure that departments or other um, uh, group memberships or other uh, attributes that you specify um, will, uh, will, make, uh, will make up the policies and will be able to, uh, to block that communication. So that's all for now. Thank you for watching. Now, I hope this video has helped you in creating your own IVB policies. If you're interested in more of our content, then please visit our website practical365.com, check out our YouTube channel and follow us on Twitter. Thank you for watching.